I see we have a good group of people here. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. This is a uh, reveal for the results of really our first uh, activity in the uh, community biospace from Haven, And uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Nora in a minute, who's going to give us a little background on the process that she went through in preparation, the uh, process of what was happening you know, scientifically or, or with the uh, bacteria here at a high level. Uh, we'll then show you what was, uh, what the results were. And then we can do questions and answers, and uh, we'll go from there. So, Nora, I turn it over to you. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Um, nice. Yeah. So, um, Tara just told us a little bit. For those who were there here last week, um, we did this really fun uh, sort of art biology um, experiment together. Um, and I want to tell you kind of how it worked. Uh, my name is Nora, not Hannah, as it says on the screen. But um, I am, um, so I'm the facilitator for the biology lab. And um, the way this whole project sort of starts is that I went in and I had all these really colorful bacteria that I um, wanted pe people to be able to paint with. And so I uh, went into the lab and I grew them all up. And here you can see what they look like in the test tubes. Um, there were four different bacteria, four different colors. Um, and so they, that gave us four different paints to work with. Um, and so then when people came in, we were able to um, draw pictures that we wanted to sort of make with the bacteria and all the different colors. And everybody went around and um, traced and drew, drew stuff using these different colors and kind of mixing things. and spreading it around. Um, and then you can kind of see the outline of what everybody made, but uh, it's not quite, it hasn't quite filled in yet because what you need to do is um, take your art and then we put it in the incubator, which lets the bacteria grow. And um, this sort of brings the picture to life and all the different colored bacteria can, can form an image. Um, and Here's what they looked like on the first day. Um, you can see the different colors up close. Um, but uh, what were we actually doing? Kind of give a little more background. Uh, the lab right now, we've got bacteria um, that we've been working with. And the, the common way that we grow it is on Petri dishes. And bacteria are living things like people, but just much smaller and much simpler and um, they can grow and reproduce really quickly. So if you're one bacteria living 20 minutes later, there can be two of you, you divide and grow. And so in a day, even if you start out with just a little bacteria on a Petri dish, it grows really fast and makes a nice uh, dense image. Uh, in, in particular, in, in the lab, we are working with E. coli, uh, which I, if anybody's heard of it, it's definitely not a bacteria that you think about something you want to paint and draw with, but um, like a lot of things, there's good E. coli and there's bad E. coli. And the one we worked with in lab is really safe and can't, can't hurt anyone. Um, and so that makes it cool to study and try to think about what makes E. coli make people sick, but it also is cool because you can make it do crazy things like glow green. Um, and the way they do that is uh, by changing the bacteria's DNA. So bacteria have genomes just like people and all other animals and even just like viruses. And so the way they, the scientists made these bacteria green is by giving them this gene that uh, makes the bacteria produce a green sort of pigment. And so they, they put in this gene that uh, lets the bacteria produce green pigment. And so this pigment they can also tweak and make it, you know, not just green, but blue and purple and pink. Um, and so uh, that's how we got, got sort of a range was, was through that. And then the, the agar comes in, that's how the bacteria actually get their nutrients. So um, even if you're just a bacteria living, if you don't have anything to grow and divide, then you won't form these nice, um, sort of thick carpets on the petri dishes that we saw. And so the petri dishes use agar, which comes from seaweed. 
Um, and that sort of makes them sort of like gelatin-like. And then we also mixed in some nutrients for them so they can grow. Um, yeah, so we were gonna show off some of the, the stuff everybody made. Jared, if you want. I guess if you want to stop sharing, then uh, I can I can go. So I uh, will show you in the uh, fridge. So we moved it from the incubator, which is right here, and we moved it into the fridge to arrest the development. Uh, we had a little mishap. We were supposed to leave it for two days, and it stayed in the incubator too long. So the picture that you saw, we went a little past prime. But we're going to work with it, and there's still color, so you'll see. But you'll also have to imagine that at one point they were a little more like the picture you saw, uh, the early picture. So I'm going to go grab the the uh, the other ones out of the fridge. And I'll do my best here to uh, go through. Um, I don't know if we have. Uh, so is anyone on here who did? Uh, so Kate, you did yours. Maybe I'll find Kate, and you can tell us what you did. Did you label yours? Uh, Kate. I did. All right. Yeah. All right. So Kate. The, the reveal for yours. Let's see here. Um, so we kind of have. Do you want to describe what we are looking at? Yeah, so I was actually um, working on a glass project in the space at the time and so wasn't sure what to do. Um, and so I basically used the same design that I was using for for the glass, which is an ocean wave. So it's sort of a curl of a of an ocean wave. And I just kind of used the different colors to to spread that in sort of a circular pattern. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, I can see some purple up there and then some other uh, colors. So. Uh, I don't know if we have, uh, was Michael, um, I'll just go, go to the next one to see. So this one, uh, yeah. Oh, that came out really good. You can see the color in there. Yeah, and the, the texture, the like pattern. So is Aza, Aza's here. Do you want to say anything, Aza? Uh, it said, I think she said she can't talk, but. Oh, OK. Yeah, no problem. So it's a little purple and the. Uh... OK, so I'll go on to the, on to the next. This one, we have a little um, purple and blue mustache. Yeah, that one's mine. Oh yeah, Mike, you wanna say what inspired you? Oh, that's just a self-portrait. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm whistling there, which I like to do. Oh, I see. <laughs> Little I see music notes popping out, yeah. I see the whistle, whistling now. <laughs> Great. Actually, can I get a screenshot? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably brighter on the yeah. black. I'll start my video too, if you can see. Uh, okay. Uh, great. Yeah. So I've been growing my mustache uh, almost a year now. This is last March. Uh, so it's been my fun uh, quarantine hobby. <laughs> and we have a Kim who has a very nice birthday cake with pink with some glowing candles. Is Kim here? Doesn't look like it, but we appreciate the cake. Uh, then we have a design, like a floral. Yeah, so my, my girlfriend Sarah did that one. Um, yeah, it's like a sunflower. 
Well, whoever put green tape, I think, it was, I think it's uh, Michelangelo's actually. I can't quite, oh, it's the pipe. Do you see it? There's a pipe in the middle, a purple pipe. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah, the, the camera's not necessarily helping, but there, there is a, I can, I can see it here. All right, a few more. We've got Ruby, who looks like she did a outdoor scene. Going, got a few more. And yell out if we get to yours. We have Gus. And Gus had, it looks like uh, maybe a son with some cats or something. So, got that art there. Got Kevin. Some serpents. And then you have this uh, little triangle man, or maybe electronic component. That's by, uh, oh, CJ did that one. But it probably is an electronics component. And you have MP, oh, this must be, these are the tests. So these ones are arrested earlier. And so you can see there's a little more color definition uh, on them than we got for the ones that got a little overbaked. But this is learning. Oh, and there's, there's one right here. All right. So I think we have gone through uh most of these and uh we can enter into questions answers and comments so any questions in particular for you know we did a little very basic introduction to the science but there's probably some more detail we can add to that if people are curious so uh feel free to ask questions I was curious what temperature it incubates at. Yeah, um, so it's funny, the bacteria we study are even the ones that aren't dangerous all like to live at the temperature of the human body. So that incubator is 98 degrees, which is what most people are supposed to be. <laughs> now, is that because of some chemical process that all is it pretty much all life likes to be at 98 or just no it's it's just e coli and like some people who study like salmonella but actually people who study because those bacteria they found living inside of people so they like to be 98 degrees but the bacteria that like live on the surface of your skin like staphylococcus or like people who get staph infections those bacteria like to be like 70 degrees because that's kind of the temperature of like the surface of the skin. So they've just all evolved to really take advantage of whatever, whatever conditions are given. Um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, so anybody who wants to jump, jump in with a question, ask a question, but uh, can you say anything more about the process that 
uh, how they figure out what those proteins have the different colors. Like, do you know anything about how they design those or they select for them? How does this, how does that happen? Yeah, it's really interesting, actually. Um, the the first one of those pigments was discovered in like the 70s, and they basically found it in jellyfish. So they they called it green fluorescent protein because it actually it glows like it in regular light, but it it like it glows especially bright under like UV. Um, and so they found this gene that makes this pigment in jellyfish and they took it out of the jellyfish and they put it into a bacteria and, and it made the bacteria green too. <laughs> um, and so they've also put this into almost every living thing that people can engineer. So it's in like plants and they put it into, you know, animals and like mice if they want to study something to to make it green. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. And is it uh, something that's dangerous to to people? Like, can you consume it if the animals get out in the wild? What happens? Yeah. So it doesn't usually do anything. It's definitely not harmless to people. If you ate something that had this pigment, it's not going to do anything to you. If you're the bacteria, you might not love being green because it doesn't really give you any benefit. It's a, uh, you know, if you're a bacteria, you're basically just trying to grow really fast. So you may not want to be green, but the protein eating it or having it, it doesn't, doesn't make anything toxic or anything. Um, I don't know if there's any I don't see why anybody would genetically engineer like an apple to be green. I guess they're already green, so it's probably not, <laughs> it's not much interest, but if they did, I don't think like it's, it's not like it, somebody would have an allergic reaction to it or something. I've heard of people making green beer uh, or glow in the dark beer. So I wondered if it's a similar process or something. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's, it. it's, I'm sure it's the same thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, looks like, uh, do you have to incubate the bacteria or can it still grow at room temperature? Also, can you speak about temperature in general with this bacteria? Oh, is that? Yeah. And that's um, as a. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it, it, this will also grow at room temperature, um, but the, it grows a lot more slowly. So it's just, it's kind of like all of the things that help the bacteria survive and divide and stuff just aren't, aren't as happy when they're a little hotter. Um, but most, so most bacteria have like a range of temperatures, like kind of all living things. Like, I mean, people are pretty adaptable, but we obviously think about all these animals that aren't going to be that happy when global warming happens and they get really hot. Um, but most bacteria, it's like, oh, they can live, they can like survive. They can survive really a lot of different things, um, like negative, you know, 200 degrees Fahrenheit up to like, you know, over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. But they, um, they do start to eventually, they, they get not very happy. Although there are all these crazy bacteria that like they find at the bottom of the ocean and these like vents or in outer space at a million crazy, you know, really, really cold. Um, but it's not like, we think maybe those bacteria aren't like super happy, like they've survived, but they're not like, they'd rather be in the incubator and lab on a Petri dish hanging out. I could really talk about bacteria forever. So <laughs> if anybody has any other bacteria questions, always I'm your lady. Yeah. So do you, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I can definitely add more to the um, fluorescent protein color palette. Uh, I can just quickly share my screen with you all so you can see it. Oh, I get like, um, Oh, let me, I can fix that. One moment.
Perfect. I think that should work now. Um, so I hope you can see my screen and like, please don't judge my million tabs. Um, but this is one of the, like the, like a really dramatic picture of the fluorescent proteins that were available back in 2004. And since then, like, you know, 16, 17 years have passed, but for the most part, people are still sort of sticking with these colors. And the way the history of this sort of goes is that, um, as Nora said, the first fluorescent protein to be found in nature was GFP, which is green fluorescent protein. The next one to be found in nature was called, uh, is called uh, red fluorescent protein. And this was um, found in corals. And so, subsequently from these two different proteins, scientists have performed um, mutagenesis reactions. So they have, they have sort of accelerated, they've created mutations in different parts of the protein to try and get these particular colors to show up in their bacteria. And so it's like, you know, the same sort of DNA damaging agents like UV that are used or certain like carcinogens that are used, they can accelerate that process of DNA damage and ask, okay, so if say something like this would take evolution a really long time to do, can we speed this up in the lab and can we get a whole bunch of different colors? And so this entire palette is derived from red fluorescent protein, and this palette is derived from green fluorescent protein. And so like the colors are like really like vivid and exciting. Um, and they tend to have different uses, different, different uses in like research, but also at least for the purpose of agar art. Um, perhaps uh, Nora can tell me if like if you know which colors were used. No, they, they didn't tell us. I think it was like their proprietary, they were, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess like one was like, a, one looked pretty purple. Yeah. Yeah, so they look, um, they end up looking pretty, I mean, this is like, you know, them subjected to um, UV light. So it's like, this is what it looks like when it's glowing in the dark, but like when, when you're just sort of looking at it under regular light, it's not gonna look as intense. It's gonna look, you know, pretty, you know, it's not gonna look as as emphasized. So um, yeah, there's like, there are lots of really cool fluorescent proteins um, that have been derived from um, GFP and then RFP that were found. Yeah, uh, that was sort of it that I wanted to add. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions related to, to this? So just to um, just to sort of put a shout out to the next step that you guys can take. Um, so there is a contest with the uh, American Society for Micro Mycology or Microbiology. Um, to do agar art. So they do this annually. I didn't see if they had it posted yet for this year, uh, but there'll be a contest. And uh, folks from all over in different age groups. Now, so these are just some historic ones, but you can see the, uh, you know, the type of art that might be submitted to these sorts of things. Uh, this particular one was one of the winning uh, submissions. Uh, and you can see that it looks like they didn't use fluorescent. They actually used other types of bacteria to get the, the range of colors that look more like a pastel. Uh, but there's an active community of people that do this. And you might, uh, you might look it up and consider submitting a, uh, an option. And what I, I wanted just to show again this picture, which um, showed closer to the height of where the uh, brightness was, uh, what some of the differentiation was. So you can actually see more of the, the color changes in the pink and the blue and uh, so on. And so there's a little bit of an art and a nuance and we're learning. 
And uh, Nora, you had said that uh, we save some of these so that we can uh, cultivate them and use them in the future. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you can even we can even get more colors. But now that we have we have them frozen, we can just keep playing with it. Great. And can you tell me a little? You said it's used in research. So why would somebody use a fluorescent color in research? Yeah, it's really interesting. So that the person who discovered the green protein actually ended up winning the Nobel Prize for it because it was such an important discovery in science, even though it seems kind of, well, I don't know. It feels like, oh, you made something green. You know, we can, <laughs> I can make something green if I, you know, get some dye from <laughs> wherever. But really the coolest part is that you can just, because it's a gene, you can, you can kind of attach it to any other genes that you want to study and then you'll you'll sort of know where what's happening with them so um for example one of the the things that these people studied was like how um how repairing your dna like uh, can impact cancer so let's say like people who have um certain mutations in their in their dna might not be as good at protecting themselves against cancer as other people. And so they can, they can study this by making like certain genes in that person green. I mean, they don't do it in people, but like they would do it in mice, like the same gene. And then um, you can sort of track that, that DNA repair or whichever sort of pathway inside of the cell you think is related to the cancer. And you can, you can actually see looking under the microscope, which bits in the cell are green, like, oh, is, is the DNA repair messed up? And that's why, is, is it different from a person who wouldn't get cancer? Um, there's some really cool stuff. I, I can definitely elaborate more, but it's basically like how specific you can get. You could say, I only wanna see the green things. And, you know, or if, some, if I wanna study Alzheimer's, I can just label the, the critical component of Alzheimer's green, and then I can really see it happening in somebody's, in an animal's brain, for example. Um, so it would be cool, like if we can, um, once we have the microscope all set up, we'll be able to see, like you can compare when the bacteria are green versus not. Um, Great. So it really, it gives us, we're doing art right now, but it gives us a hint of what you can do more scientifically in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. I tried to get some of them in UV, um, but we didn't get. You know, it's a little. We don't have the best setup for UV, so you get a little more light, but not. Not yeah. enough that it's exciting. So, well, I think we'll keep refining, and in the next version of this, we'll have uh, blockbuster uh, versions, and uh, I think that brings us to the end. Unless we have any other questions from the from the group all right going once going twice uh sold well thanks everyone for coming and seeing the our first venture in uh making these dishes and learning a little science uh we'll be doing some other they're not posted yet but we have some other events um i want to do something where we actually make materials out of mushrooms uh, I want to do an event related to understanding and interpreting DNA data from the popular 23andMe and other type of sites. And I'm sure, uh, oh, we want to do one related to uh, alternative materials to like leather that you can grow with bacteria. So those are just some of the ideas. And if you have any others, uh, let us know because we're going to try and figure it out. <laughs> so thanks everyone. And 